Welcome to Charlie Mike. If you're a combat veteran with an entrepreneurial bug and want to know what highly successful combat veteranpreneurs are doing to transform their sacrifice and experience to create their visual reality, then this is dedicated to your inspiring and fulfilling future. And now your host, Dwayne Peril. Invest in Yourself ebook is my free gift to you for listening to the show and becoming part of the CO Nation. To receive your free gift, please go to landmarklifecoaching.com. Thank you for joining us on this special edition episode. There are so many courageous champions who support our veterans that do it purely out of admiration and love for the sacrifice and service exemplified by our veterans. Not for credit, not for recognition, and not for money. These courageous champions stand in the shadows of our veterans and do all they can to help make their futures fulfilling and empowering because that's what each and every veteran deserves. Our guest today is Jordan Kessner. Jordan is a 26-year-old entrepreneur on a mission to change the world. Started his pursuit as a combat medic for the U.S. Army. Time, unfortunately, was cut short. This led to a tough transition from being homeless to getting a degree in exercise science from East Tennessee State University and an internship with the United States Olympic Committee. This transition set up the ability to continue to risk everything, creating two companies, Warrior Within Athletics, which is a fitness and clothing company focused on creating jobs for homeless veterans, and Stealth Performance Communication, a wearable technology that is about to rock the planet for military and private security sectors, medical fields, and even sports such as football and baseball. All right, Jordan, well, welcome to the show and thank you for being a guest. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity to speak about our missions. Yeah, I'm excited to have our listeners hear about your uh, your path, you know, from being in the military yourself to transitioning out and working on becoming a very successful entrepreneur. You and I have had the uh, the chance to, to talk a little bit at different times, and I think you've got a, a great story that our listeners need to hear not only in your military experience, but in you know how passionate you are about the two companies that you've started to be able to support veterans in two distinctly different ways. So it's pretty impressive that that you are doing these you know in parallel. So uh, before we uh, get into the actual businesses themselves, can you give us a little kind of a little bit of your background of you know you went, how you went in the military and how that transition came about? <laughs> Uh, yes, sir. I appreciate uh, all the the feedback on our companies. Um, first of all, our my background uh, started like as you mentioned as a combat medic in the army. Uh, it was unfortunately cut a little short uh, when we had major cuts in the military in like 2011, 2012. Uh, as Obama cut major programs in the military, um, he also cut a lot of people with that. Uh, and a lot more emphasis on people than programs. And so I end up being a casualty in that situation. So um, upon my uh, medical discharge, I end up having to um, kind of figure everything out. My entire life was flipped upside down. So I was actually would be a captain by, by now, if not further. Uh, but definitely I would have been a captain by 25 and uh, end up – uh, having to change my entire life's approach. So I was homeless for a period of time. I went on um, to get my degree in exercise physiology. I used my background in exercise science and um, uh, like sport technology and the implications of that within uh, program development, different things to be able to create a communication device that doubles with biometrics. Um, so that's our wearable technology. And then we have a fitness related company that just, you know, provides general, uh, programming for individuals. Um, but the big focus with that is, um, uh, is being able to provide jobs for homeless veterans. Um, so we have a screen printing service, uh, where we're making shirts, uh, for different industries 
and then being able to use those uh, to, to hire homeless veterans in to help us not only distribute, but uh, produce those shirts as well. Yeah, just kind of stepping back, uh, you know, it's, it's very interesting, you know, the, the, the transition that you went through coming out of the military, you know, being, you know, uh, medically separated and then, you know, finding yourself in the homeless situation. I, I'm sure our listeners find, would, would be very interested in, you know, kind of understanding, you know, what, what was your uh, thought process at the time when, okay, this is the situation I'm in. And you didn't, it doesn't appear that you said, well, you know, I'm just going to have to go get a standard job and figure it out. You really, yeah. you know, took the level of risk you were at and, and raised it, right? Which, which is a sign of a true entrepreneur because you have to be risk adverse to a large extent. And so, you know, can you kind of walk us through that thought process? Because I'm sure it's, you know, it's it's very relevant to, you know, how an entrepreneur would 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 think in these situations. Exactly. Um, I'd say there's probably a combination of three main things. Uh, first of all, I set goals high. So um, I, I, I definitely made sure that <laughs> what I was trying to achieve was no small task, obviously. Um, and then in addition to that, being able to adapt. Um, so just in general, uh, I grew up on a farm uh, in a actually in a town that has zero red light. So just having to be able to adapt and, and make things happen has been something that is just part of my life. So uh, I think that that was a huge role in being uh, innovative and creative in the, in, in the moment in a situation where I could have just uh, let everything kind of continue to be destructive. Uh, I, I did the opposite there. And then being persistent um, to be able to make things happen, networking, uh, religiously, I'd say that that's probably the number one reason to success is um, creating, uh, you know, uh, certain relationships, maintaining those, and then leveraging uh, who they know and uh, different in various industries. And I think that that's a, a key is in various situations. So you need to see either a you have money, so then you can go in and first of all you would want to be strategic with that money and not blow it, but find certain scenarios that you're lacking as uh, as a founder uh, within your company and then fill those spots. And you either do that with capital or you do that by networking. And so um, networking, I feel like, creates personally creates better teams. Uh, and the reason why is because you have people working for your blood, sweat, and tears, not just your cash. Uh, and you can, you're also a little bit more... Um, frugal in your decision <laughs> on who's on your team at that point so then you actually create a better team in general so i think networking is is absolutely tremendous yeah no i agree networking is one of the one of the most uh important things you can do in any career you know i i spent many years and i have spent many years in the corporate world and because i was within an organization where i played a single role I, the networking part, I say, you know, was not as important, but anything I do from an entrepreneurial perspective, networking has been, like you said, the absolute key because you're going to have those gaps and skill sets, gaps in knowledge, gaps all over the place. And so you got to find those teammates yes. that can come in, fill those gaps, and you can let leverage each other's strengths rather than focusing on how to how to fill any, you know, cover up any weaknesses per se. So, so that, that's great information. So, you know, as you got into these uh, endeavors, did you bootstrap these from, you know, money you've earned or were you able to gain some uh, insight into some initial capital from, you know, small investors per se, or how did you do that? Yeah. Um, so originally, uh, well, a little bit of both. So the, there's a lot of bootstrapping, definitely being resourceful. Uh, I have a lot of human capital. So through networking, I've got a lot of people involved that uh, help make um, a lot of things happen. And so those uh, those type of situations uh, played out from being able to have friends and family uh, they got involved a little bit. Uh, we end up raising $20,000 over a period of time that allowed us uh, to put uh, initial development in place, um, app getting applications, a little bit of 
um, lawyer based cost. Um, <laughs> then the lawyers also um, invested a little. They basically deducted. Uh, money from what they would have charged us in order to make sure that you know we're incorporated properly uh, through Wilson Cincini. That was a partnership again that came into networking. Uh, so I cannot get over how critical networking is in these situations. Um, and then as far as bootstrapping, that's part I see as being a networking. A lot of times is uh, getting out there, speaking to people, creating this logical web uh, in a way like yes you don't know who knows somebody else but a lot of times if you if you are very strategic and sniper like on LinkedIn finding certain individuals in certain networks and then using them to link you to more important people or even you know they may be extremely uh, you know uh, active themselves um, but you, you definitely want to leverage those type of situations and then again don't bypass on all meetings because you don't know who knows somebody and that's kind of the whole point of LinkedIn is being like a degree away from the right person uh, so currently I'm like a degree away from Shaquille O'Neal haven't figured out how to talk to him yet but you know <laughs> one one day it'll be the right person you know yeah that's all it takes right and it's it's when you least expect it is what I found you end up meeting people yeah. that you're like okay I'm not you know, when you look back, you see the whole trail, but it's it was like three true, hops, true. three hops over, right? And not, yeah, not what your original connection intended. So that's that's a great no, point. No, no, I agree, and I think that you have to feel sometimes. Uh, it's almost like being like a Jedi. It's it's kind of weird. Like you have to um, you have to make decisions and plan things, but at the same time, you have to be adaptive and be able to feel certain situations and how they work out. Um, so you will do a lot of learning along the way, uh, but you definitely have to be aware of, like you're saying, how certain things will, will need to be changed in a moment to be able to pivot. And so I think you have to have a special kind of vision uh, for that. And, and it's not it's hard to kind of teach it. Uh, it's something I think that you have to be adaptive and be just be very, very uh, attentive on certain things that are going on. Yeah, that's a great point too. You know, being able to know when to pivot because w when you start out, you have this grand vision, and then you know, shortly thereafter, <laughs> it's it's actually changing, morphing, and you know, for the most part, it can be for the good, and you just need to be able to know when when to make the pivot and what's the right pivot at at different points. Because if you get too set on a particular vision or path or outcome then you're going to miss opportunities and really limit yourself in what you truly could be achieving with your uh, organization. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so as you got into the, the, uh, the entrepreneurial, uh, excuse me, entrepreneurial realm, which, which venture did you step into first? Was it uh, the stealth communication or, or your uh, warriors athletics? Um, the warrior within athletics is my, the first, uh, endeavor that I started um, and I did that by going like door to door in rich neighborhoods and like offering uh, concierge training services at, at like rich people's houses <laughs> uh, so that was uh, that was interesting <laughs> um, so like, as far as like I mean it wasn't it was it definitely was a learning experience I had never at that point I had my degree and I knew what I was doing as far as training and stuff went, I knew that there was a lot of rich people and uh, men that played golf and things like that. And so I was like, hey, you know, do you want to be able to, to hit the ball like 50, 50 yards further? Let me train you. <laughs> and so those would be like, uh, I, it worked out for a while. I served tables at a country club while I was trying to push that scenario on the side uh, in order to, to move that further. And I always had this idea of making – this clothing line where it would basically be like releasing your inner warrior no matter who you are. And so we would adapt this clothing to different sports. Uh, currently we're in, in CrossFit. We'll be moving into MMA and then uh, more military related stuff. And then after that, we'll start getting into baseball, basketball, football. So uh, there's a whole lot more to come from that company with regards to designs. Mm -hmm. um, but what we want to do, uh, then that get, get, sent me on to a whole other idea of being able to hire homeless veterans to help us do that. 
Uh, we can sell shirts for teams and high school, middle school, things of that nature, and allow them to do fundraisers as opposed to selling like Krispy Kreme donuts or candy or things of that nature. They can sell our shirts, which help hire veterans, and at the same time uh, gives them 20% of the proceeds go directly to the uh, to the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they can either do that through the coaches or we can sell shirts at their game. So that's another kind of play that we're build, that we're building off of it. Um, along with an after-school training program. Um, so that's almost like a boys and girls club. But it'll be an athletic training program for uh, the future of student-athletes. So we'll be able to do sports-specific training, prepare them for you know whatever particular sport they're focused on at the college level, and then also provide academic tutoring at the same time so that they're getting the best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. And then there'll be like a sports-specific training coach such as myself, um, that would be able to provide programs for them. So uh, it would be elite a level uh, strength and conditioning, and we would do that through a facility that if, hopefully if we can get the funding for this 501c3, we'll be able to provide um, you know several different situations. Right. Yeah. Wow. You guys got a big vision to fill, and it sounds like you're well on your way to, to doing that. Um, so that that's great, and the fact that you're able to help homeless veterans in the process is is even even better. Um, being able to give back to the veteran community because that's that's ultimately what we're all you know looking to do in this realm, and so that's that's very admirable. All right, so we're uh, going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, Jordan's going to get into his other endeavor, Stealth Communications, and give us an understanding of kind of how he started that, what was the drive behind that, and where they're at now, and, and where they're looking to go. So we'll be right back. Landmark Life Coaching's vision is to be the nation's premier coaching partner for inspiring and empowering those in transition. They partner with courageous groundbreakers and transitioning veterans to create fulfilling and empowering futures that they desire. They have partnered with various entrepreneurs and transitioning veterans to leverage their core strengths and implement the framework for the future they always dreamed of. Could you or anyone you know benefit from a success partner to bring clarity to your future or their future? If so, please check out LandmarkLifeCoaching.com for more information and charliemikepodcast.com for the Charlie Mike Podcast, showcasing the successes of combat veteranpreneurs. All right, we are back with Jordan Kessner. Jordan, before we went to break, had been giving us a very good overview of how he started Warrior Within Athletics, a fitness and clothing company, and some insight into where they're looking to go here in the near future with their 501c3 status once that comes through. Uh, his company is you know, bringing homeless veterans into the fold to be able to give them an opportunity to work and be productive, and so that is an amazing contribution back to the veteran community. And, you know, as we talked before the break, Jordan also has Stealth Performance Communication, a wearable technology company that he's been working uh, diligently to build and get investors interested and involved in this amazing product. Uh, I've had the chance to talk with Jordan Pryor about this product, and it's pretty impressive. Uh, as, a, as a CIO, I'm very much into the uh, technologies out there, and so I'm very impressed with the amount of knowledge he has in this type of uh, technology and product and, and where it's going. So Jordan, can you kind of give us uh, a little background on how you, what, what was that, what was that driving force that kind of got you into this wearable technology uh, field? Um, well, I grew up on a farm, so I've always had to be uh, slightly innovative um, with, with different various things that we may be doing, uh, fixing equipment or different things of that nature. So uh, I've always just kind of been curious on creating things, and so we were. I was actually watching the Detroit Lions and the Green Bay Packers play, and Aaron Rodgers was at the line of scrimmage and goes to snap the football, uh, and the defense uh, tries to switch defensive players. So, and as opposed to calling a timeout, he just snaps the ball. He gets 12 men on the field. Ends up it was third and seven. It turns out to be third and two. Uh, as opposed to being, they were at a full spread uh, going to throw the ball. They end up changing to an I formation and ran it. Got a first down on that, so it made it a lot easier to convert that third down. Uh, they were within the 30-yard line, so that actual penalty, that five-yard penalty, was an extremely pivotal play at the end of the game. They were losing. They went on to score and win. I mean, granted, 
they could have scored uh, anyway. However, I just feel like that that particular situation could have been handled better. So uh, in doing that, I, cr uh, I created a uh, communication system that would work uh, originally through vibrations uh, to be able to make uh, substitutions or change certain situations based off of like blitzes or things of that nature, just through the uses of vibration from coaches on the sideline. Uh, so instead of having people running in and yelling and smacking someone on the butt to get their attention and then running out, you would easily be able to uh, to save like six seconds on a transition time uh, from the sideline. So that was the first level of that creation. <clears throat> and then I went on to mold it from there thinking, well, how could we use this as an entire communication tool for like quarterbacks and middle linebackers and develop a play calling uh, system? So we created a coded message system that works on a military encrypted mesh network. It can communicate. Uh, the certain ones that we were using for the football team can communicate nearly 14 miles. And we've developed a new long-range uh, radio frequency device that can communicate over 100 miles. And we're using that more for privatized security and EMTs. Um, so, But for football, we easily um, create a communication tool within the stadium that's military encrypted so it's virtually unhackable and it separates the team's communications uh, we also streamline on top of that medical emergency communication along with security so if there's a shooting in the stadium then our communication for the uh, for the security device would send uh, an uh, emergency alert to even the players which would allow them to get off the field faster so you save like million dollar assets from being shot so there's multiple reasons to actually use this communication tool yeah wow that, that's impressive you know it's it's always good to make sure that your product you know can grow beyond the initial market uh intention which for you was sports and now being mm -hmm. able to take that you know to the military and or first responders is is a great uh you know future future way to expand the technology and use and be able to add value to those communities as well so so as you were have, as you've been working through this what's been you know what's been probably your biggest obstacle that you've faced to be able to grow this kind of um company in in you know in the market um learning and adapting uh are two key situations so I would, any um, starting entrepreneur, I would definitely suggest um, watching uh, as many YouTube videos as possible from certain sources. So <laughs> definitely vet your sources and, and see who you're, who you're listening to and how successful they are as, as business entrepreneurs themselves. Uh, and in addition, if they work for maybe Harvard or Stanford or things of that nature, there's a uh, several great uh, videos from Harvard Institute. <clears throat> so you can uh, you can learn a lot from those to be able to apply them within your company. Just remember uh, adaptation at that point. So what they are saying is based off of their own experiences. You have to be able to take that and adapt it and see where the correlation is within what you're doing <clears throat> and then use what these successful people have already created and done some of it's extremely genius just on certain small approaches that they do um, that can that can change the world for you so uh, just learn how to adapt that into your own endeavor and uh, that that's going to be a huge a huge play uh, to be able to move forward lifelong learning is definitely one of those things that you know as an entrepreneur you need to be it needs to be part of who you are, right? You need to always be looking for those new sources, that new information. And I, as you said, I think that, you know, the key, one of the main keys is adapt is being able to adapt it to your organization because, you know, the, while every organization is not the same, you have to be able to pick out, you know, the value that you can get from what they were doing and then be able to understand how that fits your organization. Because, you know, some people may look at the at the information at face value and say, well, my organization is not structured like that or my product doesn't, you know, really act that way or do that way or serve that market. And you need to be able to have that keen insight like you do to be able to say, OK, I get what they did, but I also see where this has 
other value in, in the market that I'm in and in the products that I'm producing and be able to leverage that. So those are some really good insights for our listeners that are, you know, getting into, you know, a product type business to be able to know. And it, it certainly can also apply to, you know, any service based organization. But in this case, it's, you know, products is what we're talking about. So. Yeah. Uh, and you can obviously, obviously read. <laughs> I didn't want to take that away from, I just think YouTube videos a lot of times are, uh, ex, uh, extremely effective. Uh, a lot of times you can find even uh, great uh, audio books if you're on the drive, if you're on the go, and whatnot. Even sometimes for free to uh, to be able to learn as much as possible throughout the day. But when you do get the opportunity, read is uh, is always a, a, a great situation. Zero to One by Peter Thiel uh, would be a great entrepreneur book to read. Uh, don't really agree with his globalist agenda, but great business book <laughs> yeah yeah there's definitely some amazing uh books out there i was just hearing uh hearing or reading a statistic myself recently that said the most successful entrepreneurs are i think on average i think it said reading six books a month so you know yeah always and, and you gotta I need you know, to step I, it up <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah don't we all it's i you know if i get four i'm doing pretty good and yeah. my, my concern is i'm always looking for the ones that are a referral from somebody because I've gotten some duds where they, they look really good. But then at the end of the day, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, good for them. That yeah. They got it published. Well, but. It, it's kind of, it's, it's pretty neat. I, I like, I also like watching podcasts, honestly, or like one-on-one interviews and things, because a lot of times you'll have, let's say Peter Thiel, for instance, would have a, a conversational based uh, interview and then tell you every main point without major detail of the entire book. And so, uh, I mean, then you can like learn from them quickly and stand on the shoulders of giants and take what it's take it, take it for what it's worth, you know, be water and, and adapt just like, you know, be a Bruce Lee type situation. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's it's sometimes nice to get those cliff notes. <laughs> so you're you yeah, know, you can, especially yeah. if it's directly from the person, right? Like who right. wrote, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, but I do agree. Like the book does go in a little bit more detail, and there's always things to learn. Um, but you can at least spark your interest down that tunnel. Um, sometimes with the cliff note version. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or you can, yeah, exactly. You can narrow down if you do get the book. Okay. I'm, I'm really only concerned with this one area that, that really had, Does this you know, really applies to uh, the answer that I need. And then eventually you might remember another part that it has, and it may answer another question. And then you can read into that in depth if you're not a reader, but in general, uh, try your best to learn as much as possible and read as often and watch informational videos. Try not to get off the Netflix. Get uh, watch. You know what I mean. Make make it productive, and you can learn. You can learn tremendous things. Yeah, absolutely. I right. say raising capital is another problem. Yes. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Uh, just in oh, sorry. Uh, uh, just as far as information for for entrepreneurs is uh, the raising capital. Always look for ways to increase your value, uh, not just raise money. So you can be able that gets back to the networking and team building. Um, do that as much as possible. Make sure that you're very strategic about it. Kind of be like the Bill Belichick looking for your team, not just, not just, uh, uh, an executor in, in just a CEO position. But I think as a founder, you have to be more of a coach, uh, which not necessarily like a communicating based coach, but someone who puts together the right team, and that team can function based off of their skills and not what you're telling them. Um, and then that's where you create like a championship based situation. So uh, just find some people that can add, can again, fill in those holes that you don't have. And that builds value to your team, which then makes it easier for you to get funded when the time is right. I would approach trying to get funded. Uh, I did it way too early. So I didn't have the right team behind me. I wasn't in the right place. And that made it difficult with investors. Um, but once I kind of figured out how to leverage my position a little bit better with the people surrounding me, I've, I've got a lot better um, return on that. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, there's always that that right point to to uh, go for that type of stuff, and you know, you you don't want to go too early because then that's the vision or that's the uh, that's the perception that those you know potential funders have of you or, or your organization, and it'll be hard to overcome that going forward. And so then you'll have to look for you know additional 
people with with those resources. So that that's a great point to be able to clearly understand where you are in in the in the process to kind of struggle yes, at the, the right time. Trust the process. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't rush the process. Trust the process. So, uh, yeah, for sure. Um, and that, and that's uh, another thing is, but don't be scared to, to push it forward though. And that, cause like, just like fitness training and whatnot, you got to get a little bit out of your zone and push that level in order to meet another level. And so uh, same thing within business. Um, you definitely have to push your limits, uh, as, as a, an executive, like if you are the CEO, uh, to be able to put your, your company in a position to win and you have to be willing to speak to people and uh, create this. That's another thing is I served tables since I was like 15. So I had to, for like six years on various different, I've worked for, in a, J- a Japanese steakhouse as a, as a server once <laughs> and then all the way to, uh, like fine dining. So I had various communication related situations that I either had to break language barriers. So helping people like, uh, get information across to the customers, to the owners, uh, in my first job and then getting into fine dining and working at a completely different level with, uh, you know, with, uh, the elite at like country clubs and whatnot. So, that approach and being able to read tables and make that type of communication made everything a lot easier as far as me not really caring about approaching people. So don't be scared and kind of own that situation. A lot of people don't own it. And by not owning it, your lack of confidence speaks volumes in itself, which then pushes some elite people off. So if you're trying to get that money, own that situation. Yeah, that's that's definitely a, a, a great approach because you, you once people kind of you know they, they sense that fear, <laughs> it's, yeah, you know it's yeah it's downhill from there. So yeah, they're predators. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and they, and they've got you know and if they're going to invest money, they've got a lot in the game, and so they want to know. Yeah, and they want to they want to know that you're going to take care of business when time matters too. So if you're not willing to do it to get their money, you're not going to do it to save their money. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, great point. All right. Well, as we're uh, running out of time here, I wanted to give you an opportunity to let our listeners know how they can get in contact with you or learn more about your businesses. Uh, Yes, sir. So if you go to stealthperformancecommunication.com, that will give you a little bit of a vague representation of what we do. We keep it a little stealthy. Uh, So if you'd like to communicate more uh, to us about uh, further detail or even being an investor, you can uh, email us directly on that website. And uh, my LinkedIn um, is just Jordan Kessner. It's J O R D O N as opposed to A N. And uh, I, I can communicate with you directly there. It's probably the easiest way to get in touch with me. And then Warrior Within Athletics.com. Um, and then that is our t shirt based company. And eventually, we're building a new website. It should still be Warrior Within, but we'll give you a heads up, heads up um, on social media if for some reason that becomes .org. Great. All right. Well, thank you again for being on the show. And most importantly, thank you for your service, not only to our country, but your continued service to our veterans. Yes, sir. I appreciate the opportunity to join. Remember, loyal listeners, we are the home of the free because of the brave. Thank you for tuning in to Charlie Mike Podcast with Dwayne Perrow. Our objective is to bring successful veteranpreneurs to help inspire and provide insight into what helped them become successful with the hopes you can take away various strategies you can implement in your entrepreneurial journey. Visit us on iTunes, leave us a rating and review, and let us know what you thought of the show. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Oorah!